Professor Wolver, I'm going to walk you through the My Directions app. And the template you get um, is actually, and, and you can see the template URL here, here on the screen, but it, that, that template it actually will run the, the, the simple app you're going to do, and then what you'll do is some enhancements. And I'll tell you what enhancements you're going to do later, and I'll, I'll show you how to do those. Um, so anyway, first thing is, here's, here's the UI. It's very simple. There's a couple buttons. One is to choose a destination. This is actually a list picker component. So when the user clicks that, a list of choices comes up. And you know that's where you know the user might choose any location that they want a quick one-click way to to get directions to it. So maybe it's their office, or maybe it's some basketball gym they always go to, or they only go to every couple months, but they want to get there quickly. Um, okay, so then you've got another a label. This is the current location, so we'll always show right where the user is, right where the phone is. And as you can see, we've got this location sensor component which is, is the kind of non-visible component that kind of tells you your current location. Okay, the Get Directions button is just a button. When you click it, it's going to show Google Maps directions in this Web Viewer component. So this bottom thing is called a Web Viewer. It can show any web page. Um, in this case, we're going to show some Maps pages, and so we're going to use some URLs and, and whatnot to, to show those. Okay, so that's pretty much the UI. There's also a Web component. It's kind of just, we're just using it for one special purpose, which is to encode URLs. Okay, and I'll show you the blocks for that also in, in a second. And you can see that my phone's projecting on the screen, so you can see the, how the phone, the app will look um, before you kind of do anything. Okay, so let me click on blocks. Um, we've got a few variables here. One is the Maps URL. So this is a Google Maps URL. It's got parameters, okay? So these parameters can say how the map's going to look, and, and we'll talk more about those later. But the, the, this is a basic Google Maps URL, except for the source address and destination address, and we're going to have to build that dynamically. Okay? Then we've got a list of destinations, okay? and it's empty to start, but we're going to actually set those in screen initialize. I'll get to that in a second. And then the, the kind of starting destination address, which that can change, and the source addressed uh, is uh, right now current location. So let's just look at the blocks. Um, in screen initialize, what we do is we create our list of destinations. And, and this is the stuff that's going to show up in our list picker. Okay, Like, let me just click on the choose destination. And you'll see there's two um, items that appear. And in fact, they're the two items that you can see kind of getting put into the list. One is destination address, which is the summit one and then one Main Street Hartford. You know, this is kind of a weird way that we create this list, but we wanted to have a default destination address, and then we wanted to stick two, two things in. But you could just put two addresses like Main Street in here as well, or you can put whatever address you want in, in there. Okay, so that gives us the list, and then we use this listpicker.elements. We need to set it, and whatever you set listpicker.elements to, that's what shows up in this list that you're seeing right now. Okay, so I'm just going to choose Summit Street. I just chose what what the user is going to do. So in the list picker after picking, that's after the user has chosen one of the items, um, what happens? Well, we reset the destination, destination address to whatever they chose. So the selection property is whatever they chose. And then we show that address in you know on top of the button for the list picker. So you can see that destination 300. That is because of this block right here. So once they choose from the list picker, we set that button up, and we also set this global variable to, to the value of, of what they chose. Okay, and you'll see where that's going to come in in a second. Um, all right, so this location change event, very important. Anytime the phone first gets a reading from GPS or you move around a little bit, this guy gets triggered. And what we do is we set the source address, right? So as soon as someone moves, or the phone moves, we need to change the current source address. Okay, and we set it to the current address. This current address is a street address that location sensor can give you. Okay, and you're seeing a street address of 1325 Willard. Okay, uh, this URI encode block, all it does is, you know, when you, when you send a URL somewhere, sometimes you'll see these percentages, like percent 20. You know, if you don't, if you don't encode a URL, so let's say that this current address has spaces or inline characters, you need to encode it so 
you know a browser can, can understand it right so you don't have to know too much about this block other than it's going to make it so the maps URL will understand this current location okay and then we show um, the lo location uh, always so, so anytime the, the phone is moved this current location will change all right and finally, you know, when the person clicks button directions. So when I click on get directions, it should basically, well, let's, let's change my destination. So right now it's Hartford. So from San Francisco to Hartford is, is a long ways. <laughs> so let me choose um, Summit Street. Oh, these are both Hartford. Okay, so anyway, when I click get directions, it's going to give me directions from San Francisco to Connecticut. Okay. And you can see those coming up. I think it's about 3,000 miles, okay, 43 hours um, to my colleague Ralph Morelli's home. You know, I'll see you in a while, Ralph. It's going to take me a while. But when that button directions is clicked, all we do is set the URL of the web viewer. And you can set this to any URL, but what we're going to set it to is that long maps URL, which is kind of generic to show any map, and then a couple of um, parameters we can set. One is the source address. Google Maps URLs understand that and we set it to what we set before, right? So um, in this case it's this Willard Street location and then the other parameter is DADDR, the destination address and we set that to basically whatever the user chose from the list picker, okay? And so that gives us this directions map shown in our web viewer and, and giving us directions from a source address to, to a destination address. So this is kind of how you know, uh, my directions app. You, you might use a similar kind of app for a, for a map tour or a guide to your school or your, or your business. Um, you can use it for a bunch of different things. And it's pretty simple, right? Just a location sensor to see where you are, a list picker to let the user choose different places, and then kind of just building this maps URL in order to, to and, and sending that to web viewer you know, to, to kind of show the user, um, you know, give them these one-click directions. Okay, so anyway, that's your walkthrough of the, um, the basic template, uh, the, the My Directions app. I want to show you just a couple details. One is, whenever you use Web Viewer, it's important to um, go to the screen component, all right, and make sure it's not scrollable. Otherwise, the Web Viewer will continue to go down you know, forever and ever. It just doesn't stop. It's it's kind of a weird thing with App Inventor. But when you use it, set that scrollable property to to unchecked. Okay? Um, and that's just an important thing with, with Web Viewer. And, and finally, just remember, Web Viewer is for showing web pages within your app. This web component is actually for like, getting data from an API. Or in this case, we're using it for this one block it has, which is to encode URLs. You know, it would be nice if Web Viewer had that. We wouldn't have to even use the the web component. All right. Anyway, uh, in the next video, I'll show you the enhancements you're going to do to to the app.